pop quiz time. What do physical vapor deposition, gas mixing in medical devices, and analytical instruments like bioreactors have in common? Two things, actually. The need for reliable, repeatable, accurate gas flow meters and controllers, and this here chalk talk. Hi, I'm Amelia Dalton, host of Chalk Talk. In this episode of Chalk Talk, Nagar Rafi Dolatabadi from Sensirian and I explore the benefits of Sensirian's SFM6000 flow meters and SFC6000 flow controllers. We examine how these solutions can be used in a variety of applications and how you can get started using these technologies in your next design. And before we get started, don't forget to click that link. There you can find even more information about this topic from Sensirian. Hi, Nagar. Thank you so much for joining me. Hello, Amelia. It's great to be here and talking to you. And I want to say hi to everyone who's watching this video as well. Excellent. Okay, so we're talking all about Sensirian's SFC6000 and SFM6000 products. But first, can you give us a brief rundown on what these products are all about? Yeah, definitely. So SFMs and SFCs are both products of Sensirian at the same family. But the main difference between them is their functionalities. Or to say it better, actually SFCs have some additional functionalities compared to SFMs. So firstly, I want to talk about the SFMs or gas flow sensors. So gas flow sensor is actually a device which is designed to measure the rate of flow of the gas through a particular point in a system. What it does it is that it provides information about the volume or mass of the gas which is passing that specific point per unit of the time. And it provides output. This output is usually either in SCCM, which is a standard cubic centimeters per hour or per minute, or SLM, which is standard liters per minute. On the other hand, the gas flow controllers, as I mentioned, they do have an additional functionality due to an additional feature they have, which is a valve. So the valve actually allows them to not only measure the gas flow, but also actively regulate and you know, control the flow rate to maintain at the same level all the time. And it actually includes a valve that adjusts the flow to achieve the desired rate, which is set by the user based on their own application. And it is actually used in a closed loop system usually. Feedback from the flow measurement is used to adjust the flow to a predetermined set point. And so if I want to say just in summary, while both of these products do gas flow measurement, but only the gas flow controllers are able to regulate and control the way that the gas is flowing through the system. So this is actually the main difference and distinction points, you know, between the two products. All right. That makes sense. Now, can you explain the technology at the heart of these sensors? Yeah, sure. So both of these sensors and actually all of our flow sensors, including the gas flow sensors, gas flow controllers, our differential pressure sensors, and actually even our liquid flow sensors, they're all having, you know, same technology for sensing. And that is calorimetric principle. So what is in the structure of sensor, as you can see in the slide, is that we do have a silicon membrane which is thermally insulated, and we have one heater in the middle of it. And then we have two thermopiles upstream and then downstream. So the heater element actually produces a very tiny, small amount of heat and gives it to the gas which is flowing. The thermopile, it is material or device that generates electrical voltage in response to temperature difference. So it is actually technically a temperature sensor. And then, you know, when a gas is flowing through this channel, the thermopile, which is upstream, measures the temperature of the fluid before it passes over. And the thermopile, which is downstream, measures the temperature of the fluid after it has flowed over this tube. And then the heat from the heater element is then transferred to the fluid as it flows over the sensor. 
and the rate which the flow fluid is carried away, this heat is actually influenced by this flow rate. And this is the way that you can get a sense of the flow of the gas or liquid which is going based on the difference between the reading of these two temperature sensors upstream and downstream. So this is essentially how the sensor measures the whole thing, the flow. Okay, so what kind of specifications are we looking at for these solutions? Yeah, sure. Specifications that we had for our SFC5 series, which are the ones which are before the six series, um, is that firstly, they are calibrated for different gases, including the air and nitrogen, which are very close to each other. Actually, they're interchangeable. And it is also calibrated for oxygen, CO2, N2O, and argon. So these are all non-aggressive gases for which this sensor is calibrated. The measurement range for different products is 5 SLM, 10 SLM, and 20 SLM. So we do have three series of this product for different measurement ranges. And the accuracy is from 0.08 to 0.2 of the set point. And the response is, of course, a temperature compensated response because we have temperature sensors in the structure of sensor. We do not have any drift, which means that even if the sensor stays there for a long time and no flow is passing, the sensor is still going to show zero. So it is a zero point drift, actually. And then it also, of course, has an ultra fast sensor response time of about three to four milliseconds, which is quite fast. Fantastic. Now, what kind of applications would be a good fit for this technology? Yeah, so these sensors uh, so far has been proved to be very good solutions to several applications. And there are also several applications which we are looking forward for future potential applications. The ones that are being currently used successfully, one of them is actually physical vapor deposition, which is used to deposit very thin layers or thin coats on semiconductors and semiconductor manufacturing. So actually PVD or physical vapor deposition is characterized by a process which a material goes from a condensed phase to a vapor phase and then back to condensed phase when it is depositing. So it is very important that how much gas is actually entering the whole system because the amount of gas which is entering determines the thickness of the layer which is deposited. So regulation here is very important. And that's where, you know, MFC can play a very good role here for this application. Another application which can be used frequently, and it is being used there, is gas mixing in medical devices. One of the good examples here can be ventilator devices where, you know, specific types of gases, it can be air, oxygen, CO2, they should be combined together in a specific mixture and then pumped to the patient's lung. So here, MFCs can be used so that a specific amount of air is entering the chamber and then mixed together and goes to the patient. So here also, precious is very important where MFCs can be very helpful. And also, they can be used in analytical instruments. Here, I brought the example of bioreactors. So for bioreactors also, these products can be very helpful because it is really the functionality of the reactor and the precious of the resulted material are really dependent of the precious amount of gas entering and all those reactions happening to the specific and precious amount of gas, which actually can make optimal growth conditions for cells and microorganisms and enables you know, efficient and very good bioprocessing across various applications. So here also MFC is shown to be a very good candidate for these applications. All right. So, Nagar, what do you see are the biggest benefits for these two solutions? Yeah, sure. So transition from SFC 5 series to SFC 6 series has actually led to very good advantages for this device. One of them is faster time to market. So because of lower external components and being more independent in terms of electronics being used in this device, we have very good lead time and faster time to market, which is about 60% lower than our competitors. 
we have lower engineering effort and lower complexity. As you can see, we do not have that much complexity that we have on SFC5 design, which actually results in a very lower price compared to SFC5 series and, of course, better performance. And, you know, customers can actually, as I mentioned, MFC and, and SFM are different from each other, but customers for this solution can actually build their own MFC with a flow meter plus a valve. And in this case, it can cost them around 100 Swiss francs, which is much lower than an actual MFC. So these are actually the main points I can mention as benefit for this. So can we talk a bit more in depth about the SFC 6000? Yeah, sure. So for SFC 6000, the accuracy is around 2% of the set point. We have a very good reliability of 0.2% of the set point, which can be considered as one of the strong points of the sensor. We do have the full scale flow rates starting from 500 SCCM to 50 SLM. And then we do have different interfaces. It can be used with I2C, Modbus. It can be used with RS485 and analog voltage. So different communications and interfaces are possible for it. It is for only non-aggressive gases. Examples of those can be air, nitrogen, oxygen, carbon dioxide, N2O, and argon. Because, you know, we managed to integrate most of the functionality of MFCs into our own chip. So SFC 6 series does not have an external U controller. Only several external passive electronics are used for this. And because of that, we make our own chips and we control to the supply chain extremely well for this product. And this is a big asset, especially in the times that supply chain problems might be caused. We had similar examples during COVID. So our customers should be rest assured that the supply chain is working very well and we can provide them with the sensor solution they want in a very small lead time and very fast and without any pauses. Fantastic. Now, what specific applications would be a good fit for the SFC 6000? So we do have our top applications remaining. We have these products being used for PVD, for example, for coating, for deposition and etching, overall processes that are used for semiconductors manufacturing. And one of the applications, which is specifically for SF6, which is showing up, is food purging. Okay, so what kind of specific challenges of inert gas purging is this solution looking to solve? Sure, yeah. So for inert gas purging, there are three points which are, you know, the main points for this application. The first thing is that dispense of a correct amount of protective inert gas is very essential, both because we want to avoid waste and also because we want to have the functionality we are expecting from the inert gas. We want to ensure disinfection and protection from spoiling of the food, which is the main goal for this application. And we want to make sure that the process is homogeneous and repeatable to reduce costs as much as possible. And what Sensorian provides to these challenges is our solution, SFC 6. It has a precious, stable, and fast control of the gas flow. And interesting that it has the best repeatability on the market for the moment. So based on these two characteristics, it seems to be a very good solution for such challenges for inert gas purging. Fantastic. So can you explain food purging a bit more? Yeah, sure. So food purging is actually front opening unified pod, F-O-U-P. And the process usually includes purging with either nitrogen or dry clean air, which is an air with a reduced humidity, also known as CDA. And it is one of the most effective methods to protect wafers inside poops from either internal or external contaminations. So what our MFCs or SFMs, they're both functional in this application. What they do is that they, by shortening the filling cycle of this, they both save gas and save time and save money. So this is actually the main functionality for food purging. So what kind of food challenges is this SFC 6000 looking to solve? Yeah, so... Very similar to all the applications that we're looking for, SFCs, 
in this application also, we are looking for a very correct and precious amount of inert gas to be dispensed. And we are having too high flow sometimes that may damage the structure with high aspect ratios. So because of that, it is very important for us to maintain in a specific flow range. And again, we want the process to be homogeneous and repeatable. Also, we want the costs reduced and we want the process to be optimized. What SFC6 provides in this regard is firstly, purchase stable and fast regulation of the purged gas, which is a solution to the first two. And we also have the CMOS sense technology, which is the heart of all of our sensors. And we offer unmatched repeatability. As I mentioned, it is the best one in the market at the moment. We have the calibrated digital sensor actuation, which actuates the valve without the need of any additional microcontroller, which allows for optimization for high volumes and reducing the costs. All right. Well, Nagar, I think that's all I have time for today. Thank you so much for joining me. Yeah, thank you very much for calling me. And I'm really happy to be here. SFC 6 Series are the newest version of this product at Sensoria. And I just highly recommend people checking them out and let us know if they have any further questions about them. And before we go, you didn't forget to click that link, did you? There you can find even more information about this topic from Sensoria. For Chalk Talks, I'm Amelia Dalton from eejournal.com. For more Chalk Talks, head on over to the Chalk Talk section of EE Journal. If you can't miss it, it's right across the top. Or head on over to YouTube, youtube.com slash eejournal. <laughs>